Yo, peace was good. Happy Saturday. Hope all is well. Welcome to another hip hop album review. This is part 188. The album that I'll be reviewing today is uh, Farside's debut album titled uh, Far S- A Bizarre Ride to the Far Side, released in 1992. Um, in my hand, I have the reissue. This is the, um, the 2001 reissue. Um, they released this album several times. Uh, they re- um, recently, uh, a couple weeks ago, on November 24th, which was Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, um, they released the 25th anniversary of the album. But I believe in 2012 they had released. Um, they released. Um, I'm sorry, in 2012. Yeah, they released the 20th anniversary of that album, and that album, if you buy the CD version. It actually comes with three CDs. It comes with the original album. The second disc comes with the instrumentals of that album, and the third disc comes with the um, like the remixes and the B sides of the album. Um, and that's pretty much it. But I'm pretty much good with this, like that. I, I mean, I like the album, but not like that. But to get the um, the remixes and stuff like that. But um, or to get that edition. But anyways, um, for those who don't know who Farside is, they're a group from South Central Los Angeles. Uh, consist of, f- at the time, five, you want to count Jay Swift. Um, they consist of five members, uh, Imani, Booty Brown, um, Slim Kid Trey. But throughout the album review, I'm going to just call him Slim Kid because, you know, Slim Kid Trey, that's kind of annoying as fuck. And, um, and Fat Lip. Fat Lip and um, Jay Swift, all right? Um, they got their start back in the early, I mean, the late 80s, early, late 80s, uh, particularly 1989. Um, I believe it was Imani, it was Imani, Fat Lip, and Booty Brown. They were, um, choreographers. Um, and then I think Slim Kid and Jay Swift, uh, met at a, like, at a high school. They met in high school and they were all, um, in a in like a kind of like an after school pro, pro, uh, program called um, South Central Unit, and that's pretty much how they got their start and stuff like that. And like the mentor that they worked with um, at that um, at that after school program, you know, he had ties with the music industry and stuff like that. Um, he's worked with um, people like um, you know Rick, J- Rick James. He worked with Tone Loke and um, you know people like that. So. That's how they were able to get ties into the to the industry and stuff like that, and that's how they got their foot in the door as far as the industry, and then that's how they got signed with um, Delicious Vinyl Records, and and um they got signed back in 1991. Uh, Delicious Vinyl, they heard the um demo, the I guess the execs at um at Delicious Vinyl, you know they you know got the they heard the demo, they liked them, and because of the demo. It got them into a feature on um, Brand New Heavy's second album, uh, Heavy Rhyme Experience, Volume 1, which is a very dope album. I don't have that. I uh, definitely need to get my hands on that. The only albums I have from them is the Brother Sister. They came out in 94. And I have their compilation album that came out in 95 called um, Excursions, which is pretty much the remixes and the B-sides um, from that album, Brother Sister album. And their first appearance on Wax was actually on that album, like I said before. And it was a song called um, Soul Flower. And I'll get into that later on into the album. Into the album. So there's two singles off the album. The singles are uh, Passing Me By, which is like their trademark song. Like when you think of when you think of them, you think of that song Passing Me By. It's like their most famous song. And um, other fish. Those are the two singles of the album. And like I said, I already mentioned who um, who they are. Our production is done by Jay Swift. He does most of the beats. Um, let me turn on this. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, Jay Swift. Jay Swift. He does most of the production. But um, during the making of the album, or like when they were finishing the album, uh, he actually left the group because of um, him not being compensated for the work that he did on the album. It got to the point where you know they would be like you know um, they like far side the group was crediting crediting them, themselves as the production doing the production, 
but it was really Jay Swift doing the beats. So the only song that Jay Swift didn't do was um, Other Fish, which was produced by um, Slim Kid Trey and um, L.A.J., who um, did some other stuff for um, Far Side, um, I believe on the second album too. So um, that's pretty much it on that part. So you guys know how I get down. I'm gonna show you guys what the album looks like and that kind of thing. You can see like an animated Far Side, like in a, in a um, roller coaster, pretty cool. Very iconic album cover, pretty dope. Open it up. That's what the album looks like. Okay. Pretty cool, pretty dope. Open it up. As you can see here, you just see them. Right here is like a full blown out cover of the album cover. That's pretty cool. Like you see them like in a roller coaster in the amusement park. Pretty dope. And then you just see like a live picture of them right there chilling and stuff like that. Pretty cool. The track listen and all that good stuff. The shout outs and all that good stuff. Um, one thing that's pretty interesting of this album is the back. In the back is the track listing, but it's like it's like in sentence form, kind of reminiscent of what Jizza did on the on his second album, Liquid Swords, um, where it says, "Oh shit, it's jiggable time, fellas, for better or for worse." Um, you know I'm that type of nigga. Well, if I were president, I would legalize the soul flower, but that's on the DL. G man, officer, last night I saw your mama. In a sagging, I'm sorry, you gotta bear with me because like some of the some of the letterings are dark. It's like yellow and dark. Um, sagging, fruit yellow bikini. I stepped to her right, but the peeps passed me by for better for passed me by for other fish. Oh well, since Quentin's on his way with the company's backpack, backpack, the pipe and. Rock that return of the B boy tape, my my man. So that's pretty much it. So pretty much the songs that's highlighting yellow or the songs and stuff like that. So um, like I said, the two singles are "Pass Me By" and "Other Fish." So those are the two singles of the album. You get know, you guys know how I get down. I'm gonna go through some of the tracks as you can see, like I said before. So and you guys know how I get down. I'm gonna go through some of the tracks and things like that. So uh, track one is um. But yeah, I'm gonna just look through. I'm on Wikipedia, so I'm gonna show you guys. Um, just name the um, the track listen from there. This painting has to kind of um, read through that, you know, do that and stuff like that. Um, oh, features on the album. The only features on the album is a uh, buckwheat of the Waskos who I mentioned before. I showed you guys their first album, The Greatest Hits, that was supposed to come out back in 1994 but it got shelved but it actually came out back in um, 2007 so and I do have a copy of the album I showed you guys that a while back so um, Buckweed he eventually became Buck 50 uh, all my underground heads should know who he is uh, he's worked with um, you know Swole members when he was with um, the Battle Axe Records he's worked with uh, DJ Muggs uh, he's worked with Alchemist uh, a couple of times and stuff like that so I thought I'd just throw that out there. And he actually I, he actually has an album out that he dropped back in 2005, which I, I want to get my hands on eventually. Um, it's called The Redugrican, which um, uh, Jay Swift actually ended up doing the beats and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Just thought I'd throw that out there. All right. Let me go do some of the tracks. Like I said, the first track is For Better or For Worse, which is an interlude. Um, it's just pretty much an instrumental. Um, that's what I got from the song, for better or for worse. Uh, track two, um, Oh Shit. Um, pretty dope song. It's pretty much a sex song, that kind of thing. Um, just them talking about their love for sex and women and stuff like that. Um, pretty dope way to start off the album. Pretty dope. I really like that song a lot. Dope beat too. Uh, track three, uh, It's Jiggable Time, is a skit. It's pretty much... Um, them making fun of artists that 
um, you know, it's pretty much selling out their souls for the games. You know, when they first came out, you know, they're adult, but then they pretty much are confirming to the hip hop game and stuff like that, being commercial and stuff like that. And then it's just them being minstrels and shit like that. And that's what I got from this song, um, uh, Jiggle Time, or Skit, I should say. Um, track four, For Better or For Worse, um, which is a nice tie into the song. Um, Jiggable Time being a nice tie into For Better or For Worse. Um, what I got from that song, it's pretty much them talking for their love for hip hop, but. You know, them comparing hip hop to a girl kind of reminiscent to what um, Common did for I Used to Love Her. So it's somewhat similar. So I don't know if they were the first to do that because I know obviously that song I Used to Love Her came out in 94. So I think they were the first to do that unless somebody could correct me on that. So um, that's why I got from the song For Better or For Worse. Um, track five um, I'm That Type of Nigga. It features uh, Buckwheat or Buck 50 of the Waskles. And it's pretty much a braggadocio track. Um, that's what I got from that song right there. Um, it's just a braggadocio type track. Just talking about, you know, I'm the, I'm the shit, I'm the nigga, you know, that kind of thing. So, pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, track six, If I Were President, it's just a skit of them saying, like, what would they would do if they were president, that kind of thing. Um, that's what I pretty much got from that track right there. Um, track seven, Soul Flower. Um, as I mentioned before, their first appearance of Wax was on a brand new Heavies album that came out um, in 1992, the same year this album came out. But um, the one on the album is actually the remix. The one on the album on the brand new Heavies album is actually the OG version. And there's a couple of differences with the album, with those versions. The one in the brand new Heavy's album, like I said, is the original version, and it was actually like the live version of the album, and um, the the drums hit harder, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, the drums hit harder on that on that version, whereas on the on the album version, which is the remix, it's pretty much the same beat, but it the the drums don't hit as hard. It just you know you could tell it was done. On a like you know like a drum machine on, on a sampler, so the drums don't hit as hard. It has like a more softer approach, if, if that makes sense. Um, but I actually like the brand new Heavy's version better than the album version. But the whole concept of the song is, um, you know, just saying like you know, um, you know, don't give up. You know, not give up on life. You know, you made it so far. Keep going and stuff like that. That's what I got from the song uh, Soul Flower. That's what I got from that joint right there. Um, track 8 on the DL. Pretty interesting song. Um, you have three verses. It's by Slim Kid, uh, Buckweed, and Imani in that song. Um, in the first verse, you got Slim Kid. You know, he talks about having an ego, and but he knows that he could back it up. You know, him, you know, just being a cocky ass nigga. Um, just, you know, just being cocky and being arrogant and stuff like that. But he knows it's just him being a, having, being cocky as a cover up of, of his insecurities. That's what I got from the song, uh, from, from his verse, um, Slim Kid. And the second verse, uh, Booty Brown, um, you know, he talks about his love for masturbation. You know, he loves to masturbate and stuff like that. Um, in the verse, he talks about how he just finished fucking his girl, but then at the end, he jerked off. So he's like, he would rather jerk off than fuck his girl. Like, he, I don't know, it's just whatever. Everybody has their fetishes or whatever. It is what it is on that. And then in the third verse, um, it was done by... Um, Imani, Imani, he talks about, um, he actually talks about a murder that he committed and stuff like that, but he keeps it on the DL, and that's what I got from the song on the DL, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, track 9, Pack the Pipe, it's pretty much an instrumental, uh, it's an interlude, instrumental kind of thing, nothing to it, just them playing the beat and stuff like that. Uh, track 10, Officer, pretty interesting track right there, um, 
in the song, what I got from it is them paying homage to um, Public Enemy to the point where um, they would emulate Chuck D just like on his, by his um order from his voice all the way up to how he um raps his delivery and stuff like that. And in the song, they actually talk about how they would get pulled over by police because of how they looked and stuff like that, you know, because they didn't really look the norm, you know, as what black kids were dressing back in the 90s because they were kind of like, I guess how um, kids would call hipsters, but imagine black hipsters in the 90s, and that's pretty much what you got with the far side, and that's what I got with, um, you know, with that song, um, Officer. And um, it's pretty. It's a pretty shitty thing to do, cause you know, you as an officer, you're supposed to be, you know, protecting the people, but you're profiling motherfuckers and stuff like that. And um, that's that's my whole thing with that song right there. I didn't really care for that too much. Um, track eleven, your mama. Um, that's a pretty interesting track right there, because in that song, you know, um, obviously what so what um, the title entails, you know, just them playing mama jokes but then in the beginning of the song they actually uh, make fun of conscious rappers and you know sort of about oh you know we gotta do this you gotta do that you gotta stop you know gun violence we gotta stop the violence but then they talk about how all that talk but no action y'all talk all that good talk but can you walk the walk kind of thing and they I, from what I understand they caught a lot of flack because of that and so that's from, from what I understand from that track um but like I said throughout the song they just talk about mama jokes and things like that but it's kind of it's kind of a hypocritical track because when you listen to the song officer they talk about um you know they kind of emulate Chuck D with the with their voice and you know flavor flavor as well and it's all about you know the the injustice that they go through with officers fucking with them because of the way they dress, the way they talk, and stuff like that. But then with the song "Your Mama" in the beginning, they make fun of conscious rappers. So I, I don't know. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, that's what I got from the song "Your Mama." Uh, track twelve, um, "Passing Me By." Um, with that song, um, it's a very iconic track, very dope beat, very dope video too. But in the song, it just talks about. Um, them being in a relationship with girls that um, really had no interest in being with them. Where the guy would love the girl, but the the girl didn't really fuck with them like that. And everybody can relate to that. Where, like, you know, the girl doesn't really, don't really fuck with the guy like that. This is being with them just out of pity, that kind of thing. Giving them, like, pity, pity pussy and like that. But they're not really in love with them. The chemistry isn't really there, so... Definitely relatable. I know some guys can relate to that. You know what I'm saying? Not that I've had pity pussy or anything like that, but just the fact that you've been in love with a girl that don't love you back. So that's definitely relatable. So I wish I think it's an asshole thing to do, but you know, it is what it is with that. That's why I got finished song Pass Me By. And then track 13, um, Other Fish, which was produced by LAJ and Slim Kid Trey. Um, by that time, that's when um, I believe. I want to say that was probably like the last track that they did, um, that they recorded, uh, just based on the fact that Jay Swift did most of the production, including the um, the skits and stuff like that. Um, but the only song that they that he didn't produce was Other Fish, and I've always felt like the song Other Fish was like the sequel to um, Pass Me By because on the song, um, it's actually a Slim Kid solo track. With that song. It's pretty much like after the breakup of this girl that he was with. Um, they broke up. He still can't get over the breakup, you know. But his friends is telling them, you know, fuck that girl. There's other fishes in the sea. You're better. You're worth more. You're better than that. But then he also can't fathom. He can't understand the fact that um, how bad guys always get the girls. Or the nice guy always lasts, um, finish last that kind of thing and that's very relatable because you know there's people that you know were born with the gift of gab you know how to talk to women and how to get ahead in life some guys are slow burners slow they're um, late bloomers 
that kind of thing. So that's definitely relatable, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, it is what it is on that. Uh, then you got track 14, um, Quentin's on the way skit. Um, Quentin, I've mentioned before, um, I showed you guys his EP that he came on with back in 1994 called Quentin's Here. And um, in this track, it just talks about them um, being in the studio, them calling um, Quentin to bring a bag of weed. You know, pretty much, um, I guess where the term weed carrier and hip hop came about, and Quentin being the weed carrier, being the, the plug, that weed plug, to bring the weed into the studio, that kind of thing, after um, long hours in the studio and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, that's what I got from that joint right there. But, like, getting back to Quentin, dope MC, you know, he's not the best MC in the world, but he kind of has, like, a gangster edge to him. But just him rapping over jazzy beats. Um, like I said, he has a single out called Quentin's Here. There is a video for it, but it was also an EP. Um, I do have the EP. Um, just him rapping over jazzy beats. I wish he made an album, but, you know, that never came to fruition, so... The best way you're gonna get is the Quentin's Hair EP that came out in 94. Uh, kinda hard to find, so if you can find it, definitely pick it up. Um, I do have it, um, but yeah, pretty interesting. And track track 15, Pack the Pipe, um, it's pretty much a posse cut, which is them and Quentin on the track, and just them paying homage to weed. That is an old, is an old, is a weed track. That's what I got from this song, Pack the Pipe. That was pretty cool. And track 16, uh, Return of the B-Boy, it just talks about their love for hip-hop, um, just talks about the how they got into hip-hop in the early days, just them paying homage to hip-hop back in the eight, late in the early 80s and stuff like that. Overall, dope album, I really enjoyed this album right here. Um, you know, it's just a fun album to listen to. Isn't I, I miss when hip-hop artists had fun making music you, and you can clearly tell in this album they um had fun they had fun making this album it's just showing this them showing their vulnerability and stuff like that and that's what i got from this from this album and i miss when artists did that you know because nowadays everybody has to be the most gangster or how many bitches they fuck how much money they make it's just like it takes away the fun the innocence that you know people had like it just shows that they're regular people just like me and you and it shows a vulnerability and to me that's what makes them real in my opinion but you know it is what it is of that um like i said jay swift left the group right after and if you listen to the second album which i don't have to do a review on that eventually um left the group and then jd got into the picture and they started doing the production themselves as well as LAJ did some of the production on our album and stuff like that and um like again I would have to do a review on that album so definitely stay tuned on that I'll be working on that soon and um that's pretty much it guys um dope album very underrated in my opinion I know some people like this album over Lab Cap in California some people like Lab Cap in California over this album so, stay tuned how I feel on that when I do the review on Live Cap in California. And um, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. By the way, um, I will be doing a CD collection. Hopefully, the CDs that come today, hopefully, I got some CDs waiting to come in the mail. If those come, then I'll do that uh, re um, the CD collection today. All right? So, that's it, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed that review. And by the way, thank you guys for all your comments on the Eminem revival thoughts that I did um, a couple of days ago. But yeah, it was like two days ago that I did it on. Um, really appreciate all the comments and stuff like that. So definitely stay tuned for more. All right, peace.